So yes, my name is Ben Barrett. Uh, I'm an engineering manager at Morningstar, the financial research data and software company, not the vegetarian food company uh, some people uh, confuse us with. Um, I run our direct and office cloud products, uh, or Morningstar Cloud as they're uh, referred to. Uh, direct and office cloud are the web-based versions of our flagship desktop products, direct and office. Uh, we offer a suite of tools uh, for research and analysis of multiple investment types and portfolio data. And you know, we service multiple financial uh, professionals, uh, from asset managers to portfolio managers to independent advisors. Uh, and this year, we launched three editions, uh, direct for asset management, direct for wealth management, and a lighter weight solution, uh, Office Cloud, for smaller independent advisor shops. So at a high level, <laughs> one second. What we built was um, you know, a series of applications uh, offering uh, analysis, research, custom data management, messaging, alerts, uh, a lot of different functionality, uh, all built uh, atop um, uh, a Node.js uh, backend with uh, light, you know, lightweight single page applications. And these all utilize a suite of cloud APIs that we also built. Um, and those are built atop a sea of organization-wide shared services, our proprietary research and data APIs. Uh, you know, we have the value-added business logic atop that uh, and, and service that. Um, and overall, this is all developed and run by globally distributed squads. Um, from uh, the US to China to India. <clears throat> so <laughs> we had sort of a problem this year. Uh, how do we monitor all that we built? Uh, that's a good takeaway is make that a first class citizen uh, when you're building out new software uh, is your monitoring strategy. Um, you know, we were missing a common tool and shared DevOps language uh, amongst all of the different teams. And you know, there was, there were a variety of existing solutions organization-wide, but not a, not a cohesive strategy. Um, and so we were, we were looking uh, for a tool to solve that problem. Uh, well, now, we have a smaller SRE group, so we knew we needed something uh, very scalable, something that we could easily sort of bolt on to our applications and APIs um, and, and have it globally available, obviously. Uh, and then... Because of that smaller SRE group, we also knew that we wanted to sort of scale our support model uh, to include software and quality assurance engineers as well. Um, and so due to the fact that we have multiple skill levels you know, across the board, we needed a tool that was very approachable, you know, easy to use, a lot of functionality right out of the box. And that is really where New Relic came in. Uh, after analyzing a number of different uh, uh, you know, tools and companies, um, New Relic was a great fit, and we used it as a foundation uh, for our monitoring strategy. Uh, we rolled out agents across the applications and APIs this year, infrastructure, APM, browser agents. Uh, we did a lot of custom instrumentation uh, to allow for deeper transaction tracing uh, for you know, that full stack view, if you will. Um, we added synthetics to do simple pings and uh, assess critical workflows throughout the system. And we built some great dashboards in, in insights uh, to, you know, to analyze performance over time and other key metrics. Uh, but we had sort of another problem uh, at, at this point is we have all of this great monitoring in place, uh, but, but who's looking at it? And, uh, New Relic had an answer for that as well. Uh, so, so, so how do we observe and react to what we're monitoring? Um, this is where we highly utilize uh, New Relic alerts and alert policies and conditions and the great functionality that comes right out of the box. Uh, we sort of broke all of our alerting strategy into three categories, if you will, infrastructure-based uh, alert policies, uh, application, and API, relatively straightforward. Within each one of those alert policies, uh, we have tailored alert conditions. So for the infrastructure ranging from you know, CPU and memory monitoring uh, to uh, performance uh, degradation and error rate threshold uh, you know, crossing, um, and more advanced uh, monitors uh, for key transactions. 
uh, tied into those alert policies, uh, you can tailor your alert distributions. Uh, so we can send out via email or via the mobile app uh, or even uh, utilize a webhook into, uh, into Slack uh, for you know, our, our, our general chat application. And, um, and, and we built all of that in mind with that rotating support model uh, you know, comprised of site reliability, software, and quality assurance engineers. So if any of those uh, alerts fire, uh, you know, they, will go, they will go to our ro rotating support and they will acknowledge those, those alerts. And that too is supported very well with New Relic. Um, there's, you know, you can see a screenshot from uh, an alert popping up in our Slack channel has an easy click through right to the sort of the incident, uh, incident management and acknowledgement page within New Relic. Uh, which is this is a key critical workflow that we utilize. Uh, it can be done via the mobile app or even in the web app. Uh, and then you further utilize the tool, the tooling throughout New Relic and uh, the different modules to to help with that triage. So you know once you've had the alert to the incident and you acknowledge the incident, that's when you start your triage, right? And you can escalate from there. But for, say, performance degradation, that's where you utilize uh, APM transactions. Uh, for error rate uh, thresholds, uh, that's, that's where you utilize incident contexts and, and error analytics and error profiles, all the things that just come straight out of the box. And then finally, as, uh, as I said, we didn't instrument the entire stack uh, you know, across all organization-wide shared services. Uh, but this is where the custom instrumentation uh, comes into place. Really easy to plug into your into your software, and then you can take sort of the key attributes that you are instrumenting, and utilize those in other third-party uh, tools such as Splunk, uh, which we use, which is uh, utilized everywhere throughout our organization. So we solved some major problems this year. Uh, you know, New Relic gave us that that consistent tooling and and common language. Um, uh, you know, it is a globally available tool. We're, we're, we're using it uh, across all the offices. Uh, and we, we have fine grain traceability, be able to deep dive into, you know, error traces or uh, uh, the, the, full, the full stack trace. Um, and it's extremely customizable, uh, whether it's the custom instrumentation or, uh, or your alert policies or alert conditions. And, and truly, we, we've set it up to drive our, our support model uh, for the product. You know, the, the, like I said, the tailored alert policies and conditions and distributions, like, you know, you, you have extremely fine grain control there. Um, and then, you know, incident triage and acknowledgement and support via the tools uh, are just natural workflows that can be easily transferred and, and uh, communicated out to, to your teams and your support model. And I would say the biggest takeaway for me this year, um, it's potentially obvious, but uh, is, is that your monitoring and alerting strategy needs to change along with your software, right? It, it, it's not static. You know, your software is constantly changing. Your monitoring and alerting has to change along with it. So you need to put processes in place and you know, having a solid tool like New Relic is uh, it, is a great foundational element. You know, this it is a constant evolution uh, in terms of updating your monitoring and alerting strategy, uh, and, and we have a clear roadmap. Um, you know, we want to add additional agents and expand our service map and get better full stack traceability throughout the organization. Um, we want to utilize new features such as distributed tracing. Uh, you know, which has enhan enhanced transaction tracing and pattern analysis. Uh, further custom instrumentation enhancements. Uh, you, you can imagine a whole bunch of uh, requests going through a particular route, but they might have different flavors, and you, you can instrument those in, in, in a variety of different ways. Uh, we need to constantly tailor uh, uh, the alert policies and, and, and conditions and overall noise calibration changing along with your software at, at, as, it, as it evolves. Um, we, need to, we need to curate uh, our insights dashboards and so we have uh, great metrics and, and visibility to, to other port, parts of the company. 
Uh, and then finally, we want to integrate with PagerDuty uh, to help facilitate sort of the ro our rotating support model and escalation. Uh, and this is extremely, uh, it, it, it is very pluggable and easy to do right out of the box with New Relic. Um, that's pretty much all I had. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, you know, I'm, I'm feel free to uh, come grab me over there after the session. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. Thank you very awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Awesome. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions for him to address in front of the class? All right, here we go. I saw you are using Splunk also. Where is it used for Splunk? Oh, yeah, so we do have. Uh, if there is one common tool that we have, uh, it is Splunk for logging. We all all of our APIs and applications throughout the organization. We do log to, uh, well, multiple Splunk uh, indices. So that does give a common thread for tracing. The problem is, like, some of the, you know, adding a 1% error rate threshold and, and instrumenting that across the board readily out of the box with Splunk is not very easy to do uh, and requires uh, a lot more know-how. <laughs> It's not overlapping with New Relic, what you do. No, it's, it's complementary, 100%.